Hey everyone, I'm Cosmo and welcome to another Instruments of Destruction video. Now today we're not actually going to be demolishing stuff guys. I know, I know, it's gonna be okay, we're all gonna be okay, I'm gonna destroy some stuff right now just to get it over with. So the other day I was fixing up my bucket wheel excavator because it's actually going to be a showcase vehicle in the early access release of the game. Super cool stuff, I'm really excited as you guys can see it looks way cooler now. And uh, the dev actually did something really cool, let me show you guys before we get into the video. We go to the build mode and we go to select one of our pivots now you can see there's a reinforced option and what that does is not only does that change the weight of the whole thing by like basically five times it also makes it a lot stronger if you guys remember in my last video where i built this thing the pivots were a little bit uh i guess backlashy and by that i mean they were you know oscillating a lot because of the weight of the whole creation man i got a cough drop in my mouth and it's so hard to talk but now with the reinforced pivots it is way better, there is no more, uh, you know, there's none of that nonsense with the oscillating, but I still have a very, very heavy creation. <laughs> but in any case, guys, I was rebuilding this thing, I made some, uh, I guess, anchor legs that you can extend and, uh, you know, lift up the whole thing. Pretty cool, pretty cool when you're destroying stuff, you know? And uh, what else did I do? Well, I rebuilt the whole boom arm. I added like, uh, you know, dumps in the back to make it seem like it's a conveyor. And I also added some cables to make it seem like, you know, that whole front section is actually being supported by cables in tension. And that got me thinking, can we make tensegrity structures in Instruments of Destruction? I think we can, guys. The only thing that kind of worries me is that I won't be able to get enough tension on the cables. But I suppose first and foremost, I should explain what a tensegrity structure is. So the idea behind the proper tensegrity structure, and the reason I say proper is because the ones that I will be building do not exactly meet the strict criteria of a tensegrity structure. A proper tensegrity structure will have components that are separated from each other physically, that are under compression, but are connected to each other with components that are under constant tension. I know, I know, that sounds really confusing, but hopefully this diagram here explains what I mean by that. So as you guys can see, the green rods, the green straight rods are constantly under compression. Now the members that are under tension are usually either cables, ropes, strings, basically anything that has a stringy nature can be technically used for the members that are under tension in a tensegrity structure. Now in this diagram you can see that the green members are actually just solid rods that are constantly under compression because of the red string or I guess cable whatever you want to call it that is providing tension all around and while ultimately trying to compress the green rods. Now the green rods are also not touching each other which is the beauty of it all. Really cool stuff and one practical use of something like this has actually been implemented by NASA who are trying to and I don't know if they're still trying to do this or not but they're trying to build a robot that is essentially a tensegrity structure the reasoning behind that is to be able to put a payload inside of it that will be able to be kept safe uh, due to the nature of the structure itself if you drop a structure like this it is basically going to deform but always go back to its original shape once again really cool stuff now in the case of the NASA tensegrity bot well, they're actually adjusting the tension of the cables in order to roll this robot around on terrain, uphill, downhill, sideways, you name it. Now, just going back to the idea of a proper tensegrity structure, NASA's example follows that perfectly because it's got straight rods that are under compression that are basically being kept together by cables that are in tension. So you only have either pure compression or pure tensile forces. However, you guys may have noticed, you know, a concept of like a floating table. Now, something like this also uses the concept of tensegrity, however, just not as strict. Now, the reason for that is because in a structure like this you actually have a compression force on the inside of the curve and the tensile force on the outside of the curve so technically the two objects are not under pure compression which is still fine because we can still achieve a tensegrity effect and that is exactly what we're going to do today guys I want to build some cool tensegrity structures I hope I did a decent enough job explaining what the heck it is in the first place but first destruction of the maximum caliber <laughs> Oh yeah, 
destruction. Ha ha ha. This thing has enough weight to just ruin anything and everything. I don't think it actually like does anything with the buckets. It just kind of has so much weight that it destroys everything. <laughs> oh man, love it. Absolutely love it. How is that still standing? We can fix that. <laughs> can we baseball it? Oh, I tried to baseball it. <laughs> uh, too good, too good. Alrighty, let's get rid of this thing as much as I love it. I want to try prototyping some cool integrity structures, guys. So let's give it a go. I want to try and make it as light as possible, obviously. So I'm just going to try doing some... Uh, let's use some six plate blocks here and let's connect that. Let's build something very simple. So in order to build a tensegrity structure that is stable, like a, a 3D tensegrity structure that is stable, we need at least four cable connections. Now it is possible to do a 3D tensegrity structure with only three cables, but it's gonna tip over on one side. Let's actually do that first. The other thing that I'm kind of curious to do is to put all this in a platform and drive it around and see how it reacts to that because it's actually supposed to be a fairly stable structure. As far as up and down movement goes, that thing should be solid. It will have some side to side movement, but as far as top to bottom, we should be good. So let's build a really simple three point tensegrity structure. Now in the top left corner, you guys should see what I'm trying to replicate. This is not my original idea. I'm just testing the concept in this game. This whole thing collapses is because my center of mass is just wrong. <laughs> we can at least try. And if this doesn't work, we'll just have to go to a more stable design with uh, four plus cable attachment points. Let's give this a go. We're only going to attach three cables total right now, guys. Now, like I said, my only concern is that the cables are likely a little bit too stretchy just from, you know, from my experience with them. But we're going to try amping all of this up here. Stability, I believe, is responsible for how wobbly they are, so I definitely want them to be less wobbly. Maximum tension. Uh, sure, maximum smoothness. Let's go for it. And then we're gonna attach two right here. Well, one right here. And we're gonna do the same thing to it. And now, this isn't gonna work. I I can already tell my center of mass is in the wrong spot. Okay, well, let's, let's try, guys. Let's try it. Huh, okay. So it's actually, it's actually kind of working with, with three. Wow. What? That's so cool, man. <laughs> That's so cool. <laughs> oh man. So as you guys can see, this middle cable right now is under tension because while well, the weight of this thing is pulling down on it. And these guys here are also under tension because the whole top structure wants to tip over and is pulling on them. Now, as you can see, we are lacking a little bit of tension. And one thing that is actually important in uh, real life integrity structures is having some pretension in the cables. Some of these like cool tabletop creations that you can buy actually have uh, cable tension mechanisms, which allow you to adjust the tension and basically either make it, you know, less stable, more stable, whatever you want to do. But uh, unfortunately here, I think we're maxing out our cable tension. Now I am actually curious to see if having more cables is going to uh, improve the stability of this whole thing. So let's actually give that a try. We're gonna have to rebuild some stuff, guys. So bear with me here. I'll be quick. Boom. Got some extra cables there. And we are going to amp up our settings here and give this whole thing a try again. Oh, there is... What? Interesting. <laughs> That's so interesting. <laughs> That's so cool, guys. I really want to put this on... You know what? Let's put this on a driving platform. I think that would be really cool to kind of like test out the stability of all this stuff. Oh boy. Oh boy. Okay, we're good. So how does this thing drive? Now see, if we try to go in the other direction, guys, it, it really wants to become unstable, which makes a whole lot of sense because it's only really supported in the... Wait, what is going on with our tracks? <laughs> I think they're interfering, guys. Give me a sec here. <laughs> So driving forward is actually, that should not be problematic at all because that is the direction that it is essentially supported in. However, if we reverse, as you guys can see, the whole thing collapses on itself. <laughs> That's so cool, man. It's actually so cool that it works in Instruments of Destruction, a game made for ultimate destruction and not testing engineering concepts. <laughs> but I guess it's not entirely true. I guess it's not entirely true. That's uh, that's doing a disservice to the developer. I think there's definitely like engineering prototyping intent behind this game. So I take that back. <laughs> I think my tracks are still interfering with each other or something because this one's just not having a good time. Now, the only thing that makes this a little like, I guess the word would be less anticlimactic in Instruments of Destruction 
is that the cables are actually quite thick in comparison to uh, you know the structure itself. In real life, you can make these cables almost invisible, which is the really cool thing, and make it look like this top section is essentially floating on top of the bottom section. But the concept here is still visually present because you essentially have one object floating on top of each other and you have ropes that are, you know, somehow keeping it all together and it just, at the first glance, is extremely mind blowing. So obviously right now, if we drive forward this, or rather if we drive backwards, this thing is going to want to do that. Not have a good life, right? So how do we fix that? Well, we add at least one extra contact point. Now, because I built a square and not a, you know, not a triangle, I'm just going to add two more connection points. I am treating these guys right here as one connection point, simply because we just don't have enough tension in one of these, right? So I got to use two of them, but I'm still treating them as one member. Just squint really hard and pretend that it's one cable. <laughs> so we're going to put a couple more cables in the corners here. Um, I'm just going to do them all and then I'm going to do their settings. Okay, and we're gonna add those and then we're gonna see how it holds up. I mean, you guys may already guess how it's gonna hold up much better than the other one because it is now stable in the other direction as well. In fact, it is stable in all directions. And although we might get a little bit of sway, I think, uh... I think everything will be good. Now, unfortunately, I can't really put any weight on top and test this because that will most certainly stretch out this center uh, center cable right here. But hey, I think the proof of concept is still here. All right, let's give this a try. Look at that, guys. Oh. It's interesting how it's like swaying to the one side. See, like... Right now, these are technically under compression in the game, but in real life, they would be under pretension, so they would still be tense. Uh, I, I'm not sure if I can fix that here. I think this is all maxed out, right? Yeah, it's all maxed out. That's okay. That's okay. That's, you know, that's fine. We're just testing stuff here. I mean, I could always add a third set of them, but I mean, at that point, we're just kind of getting a little carried away. <laughs> Let's give this thing a try, guys. Let's see how stable it is in all directions. Perfect. Look at that. Driving forward, we're good. Driving backwards, we're also good. But the mind-boggling part is definitely the fact that you only really see like the four corners and you're like, those are not rigid members. How is this whole thing being held up by non-rigid members? <laughs> and uh, really, I guess it's the center guy that's doing most of the work holding it up. Now, I actually want to try and see if I can uh, make this thing more stable by adding an extra, extra set of whatchamacallit. Cables. Cables down the center. That's the word. Cool. Alrighty, there we go. We got three in the middle now. Let's see if this helps the other ones. It might. It might. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. It seems almost about the same, guys. I feel like there wasn't a whole lot of... Yeah, see, like, there's just not enough tension in the ropes. That's... That's all. That's all. And I don't expect that from this game because the tension in the cables and the ropes is meant for other purposes, you know, like like destruction purposes, not holding things rigid. So I totally get that. Now, one way to get around this, like I said before, would maybe be to use like power pivots or like power arms. What are they called? What are you called? Power pivot. Yeah. Or power arm. There you go. Yeah. So uh, use that and like tense up the cables that way. But I just don't know how stretchy these things can get. I feel like they can get pretty stretchy, you know? I honestly think the stretchiness of the cables would exceed the range of the power fist or the power arm. I keep forgetting these names, man. Power arm. I don't know why I keep calling it a power fist. Alrighty, guys. So now that we've proved this works, I kind of want to build a really cool, like, big tensegrity structure. So let's give it a go. I'm going to put on some sweet synthwave and we'll get building. I really wish you could copy and paste stuff in this game because <laughs> I'm going to build this and I'm thinking, man, I literally got to build the exact same thing on top of it, but flipped upside down afterwards. <laughs>
I might be building this a little too big, guys. I don't know if the cables are going to be able to hold the tension, but we'll make it work. Always make it work. And if I don't, well, the video just doesn't see the light of day. Oh boy, well the structure's built guys. Let's see if I can connect it with cables. <laughs> so we're gonna have four on the perimeter for now. I do have other connection points I could utilize afterwards. And uh, we're gonna have two in the middle. I was gonna have one in the middle, but it was a bit of a challenge to kind of connect my fancy structure here into one point. So I just figured I'd make it two points. If anything, we're gonna need it guys because I think this might be a little bit too heavy for the cables. <laughs> two there, perfect. And this guy, I want to connect to here. Perfect. All right, guys, place your bets. Do you think this thing is going to collapse on itself or do you think it's going to hold itself up? I'm going with collapse. I'm going with collapse. That's how much faith I have in my own creation. <laughs> Let's give it a try. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, no. <gasps> it actually, did. it's not collapsing. What? That's so cool, man. <laughs> That's so cool. <gasps> That's way cool, dude. Oh, no, I don't know why I went back into build mode. Oh, dude. Way cool. <laughs> I do wish these cables were a little bit less stretchy. What else can we use? Cable, rope, wire. I wonder if wire would... Yeah, I don't think that would be as good. Let's just do it on the one side, see what happens. Okay. Huh. Huh. <laughs> yeah, that wire is so stretchy. That wire is so stretchy. <laughs> oh, ridiculous. I was like, oh, oh, it's working. It's it's not working. <laughs> so I honestly think cable would be the best. I mean, this is like looking at it, it looks like a you know, steel cable. So that would likely stretch the least out of all the elements that we have at our disposal here. So I guess, uh, I guess this is what we're going to live with, guys. I'm amazed that it's actually holding itself up, though. Like, that is so cool. That is way cool. I got to put wheels on this thing, man. I got to drive it around as well. Oh, no. Oh, no. I can actually, like, move the whole thing around even with the ropes there. That's crazy. There, let's make it like that. See what happens. It was touching the ground there for a bit. That's funny. Really, it's about the same. I thought maybe it would help the cables a little bit, but not really. I don't think these wheels are going to be able to move this thing, but we'll give it a try. <laughs> no, they're definitely not. Okay, let's let's do something normal here. Off we go. Let's see if this works. Oh, boy. Nice. They are freaking out a little bit, but it's okay. Oh! 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 <laughs> Get wrecked, son. <laughs> what? Amazing. Absolutely amazing. Powered large wheel. There we go. We'll just add a powered large wheel in the back instead. Perfect. <laughs> I wonder if that's from like moving it and the cables like stretching. I think that that I think that might be what it's from. Let's see if it happens again. Ah, uh, no, so far so good. I think it was something to do with the uh, with the treads colliding before. But look at that, guys. Barely stable. If we had more tension in the cables, we would be able to make a much more stable structure. But like I said, not what the cables in this game are intended for. I'm really happy with how this turned out, guys. Like, this is... I did not think that I'd be able to actually make, a, like, a working tensegrity structure in Instruments of Destruction. Keyword, destruction. It's a game for blowing things up. <laughs> um, but this is awesome. I am really happy that it worked out. 
little wonky creation now. I don't even know what I would use this for, but it's just a cool proof of concept. <laughs> also, why is there one unpainted block? Like, come on. Please cooperate. <laughs> well, there you have it, guys. Tensegrity structures are indeed possible in a game that is not meant to build Tensegrity structures. I'm really happy that this worked out, and uh, I had a blast prototyping all this stuff. If you guys enjoyed this video, definitely let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to hear what you think about it. If you did enjoy the video, click the like button down below. It helps the video be seen by other people. The algorithm does its magic. And if you guys aren't subscribed yet, subscribe for more awesome content, and I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye!